There's a square in modern-day Mexico City called the Plaza of the Three Cultures. It's a little off the beaten path, kind of hidden in fact, and much more modest and out of the way than the more famous Zocolo right in the heart of the city just over a mile away. It's called the Plaza of the Three Cultures because the open square is wedged between modern concrete office and apartment towers representing Mexico as a modern nation, a colonial-era church representing Spain, and the ruins of a sprawling temple complex representing Mexico's indigenous pre-Columbian roots. The neighborhood around the plaza today is fully modern and integrated into the sprawl that is Mexico City, but it still bears the name the Aztecs used for it when that temple complex we mentioned formed the core of a wealthy, vibrant quarter of Tenochtitlan, the great Aztec capital. The name of that neighborhood then and now is Tlatelolco. In the middle of the Plaza of the Three Cultures today, there's a huge monument dedicated to the victims of the Tlatelolco massacre that took place there in 1968. The Mexican army was sent in to clear the area of demonstrators who had gathered to protest the lavish spending on hotels and airports and stadiums for the upcoming Olympics that were set to start in a few days, and they cleared them out with machine guns. Hundreds were killed, many of them just students, so rightly that's the monument that dominates the square today. But there's another monument in the plaza, set inconspicuously off in one corner. You have to deliberately look for it or you might miss it. It's just an austere slab of concrete, really, nothing spectacular to look at. But it has these two sentences engraved into it. And this is the English translation, quote, On 13 August, 1521, the city of Tlatelolco, so heroically defended by Cuauhtémoc, finally fell into the hands of Hernán Cortés. It was neither a victory nor a defeat, but the painful birth of Mexico and all Mestizo people. My name is Peter Mayado, and I'm a writer who spent the last year developing a TV drama called Reign of Blood, a Game of Thrones meets apocalypto historical drama about the epic confrontation between the Spanish and the Aztecs, which in my opinion is the greatest clash of civilizations in history. It is the story of this painful birth of Mexico and all Mestizo people. As that project makes its way through the murky and uncertain maze that is Hollywood production development, I thought I'd put this podcast together to build awareness of this very important and very underrepresented chapter in history. Worst case, I publish a podcast on a subject near and dear to my heart. Best case, this might someday serve as a historical companion to the dramatic television series if it ever gets made. As a Mexican-American writer, this is also my origin story and the origin story of countless people like me across Latin America and the United States today, because it's the origin story of the Latino people, that beautifully chaotic genetic and cultural mix of indigenous, European, and African cultures that make up what Mexican philosopher Jose Vasconcelos called la raza cósmica, the cosmic race. Latinos are the living legacy of this massive collision of civilizations. For us, the story isn't just about military tactics or the convergence of historical forces or the rise of one empire and the fall of another or any other theme or motif academics have described over the years. We are the walking, breathing consequences of this chapter in history in all of the tragedies and glories and contradictions that it represents. We see these consequences in the mirror. We see them in our children's eyes, in our food and in our language, in our religion and in our traditions. And, sadly, we still see them in the inequalities that continue to plague Latin America and communities here in the United States as well. But the rest of the world is still reeling from this chapter in history, too. From Africa to Asia to the Americas to Europe, the consequences of European colonialism and their legacies continue to play out before our eyes. Colonialism brought terrible things with it, like the transatlantic slave trade and massive inequality based on new codifications of race. But it also brought things eventually like democratic systems of government and the rule of law and universal human rights that on paper, I think, are objectively good, even if we're still figuring out how to apply all of that equally to everyone. European colonialism also created something which is neither good nor bad, or maybe both good and bad, depending on your perspective. And that's this idea of a single connected global civilization. For better and or for worse, the world is more integrated than ever today. Economic globalization gets the headlines, but we're also in the midst of a cultural globalization as well. 
And so in so many ways, good and bad, the world we all live in is a direct result of this slow but certain drift toward a single global culture. To us today, looking back, it may seem like all of this drift was inevitable. But in 1500, it wasn't clear what the next 500 years would look like, nor that it would be one dominated by what we call today Western civilization. The clash between the Aztecs and the Spanish was the crucible where this idea was first forged. It was the proving ground for colonialism, the event that convinced all the great European powers to build global empires of their own. Had the Spanish failed, it's likely an entirely different world emerges than the one we live in today. We've mapped this out as an eight-part series. The first two episodes will be a deep dive into Mexico on the eve of the arrival of the Spanish, and we'll paint the world that existed there in 1519 and how it came to be. Episode three will cover Spanish civilization, how they arrived in the Caribbean, and how Cortes put himself in position to make history. And then episodes four through eight will cover the chronology of this clash of civilizations from the moment Cortes set sail from Cuba all the way up until the final battle in Tlatelolco. I know the shorthand for this story has often been the modern mighty Spaniards with their guns and their steel against the underdog Aztecs with their sticks and stones. But really, both the Spanish and the Aztecs were on the rise and deep into their own empire building. Each was the ascendant political and military and cultural power on their respective continents, and each was the caretaker of religious, political, and economic institutions that went back many, many centuries. I can promise you, the Aztecs would not have considered themselves underdogs, not one bit. This is not a pretty story with a fairy tale ending. It's a violent and brutal and bloody story, in fact, full of treachery and savagery and tragedy and coercion on all sides, and there are far more villains and heroes. This is a story we know a whole lot about historically, but it's also a story where many of the important details are missing or highly disputed. There are characters that are well-defined and about whom we know just about everything there is to know. We even know what they look like, for example, where they grew up. But then there are characters, very important characters, about whom we know very little, especially before the events of this chapter in history begin. When an event is disputed, we'll point that out. When the sources disagree, we'll point that out too. And when we're guessing or filling in the blanks of the historical record, we'll be very clear that that's what we're trying to do. This is my first official podcast as a host, and me and my team are going to do our best to pull all of this history and archaeology and speculation together into a coherent narrative that honors all the different characters and parties and points of view of this story. It's my hope that if you're not familiar with this story beyond the basics, that this podcast will help you appreciate how critical and historic it really was, and how rich and complex Aztec civilization and the other groups across Mexico were before the Spanish arrived. And if you are someone familiar with this epic in history and with the history and culture of these two civilizations, I hope this pod honors your enthusiasm and passion for this topic and proves entertaining and illuminating in enough ways to keep you interested. These are just some of the reasons why I've decided to tell this story, but there's one more. Remember the date cited on the quote from the monument in the Plaza of the Three Cultures, August 13th, 1521. We've been putting this podcast series together through the summer of 2021. And this trailer, episode zero, is being released on August 13th, 2021, exactly 500 years to the day of Cuauhtémoc's surrender to Cortez. Episode one will be out soon.